Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 through 9. These verses that you see here on the screen are the only verses in the entire Bible that make mention of some of the things that were taking place during the times of the Tower of Babel when Nimrod ruled the earth. There's not a lot of detail, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract some extra information from some of these verses that you see here on the screen. I'm going to shed some more light on some of the things that were taking place during the times that the Tower of Babel was being built. Alright, so I'm going to begin with verse 1, where it says that the Horde spoke one language back in the day, and it was after the events at the Tower of Babel that the language was confounded, as it says here in verse 9. The reason it was called Babel, confusion, that's what Babel means, it was because the Creator and His messengers confounded, meaning they switched up the language into many different languages. So the people that were building the tower couldn't understand one another. So that's how the many languages we hear about in the world today came about. Of course, they evolved through the ages and as time went by, but back in those days, they only spoke one language. All right? As it says here in verse 6, it is mentioned yet again that they all spoke one language. All right. But what I want to do is I want to focus on these three verses that you see here on the screen. Verses 2, 3, and 4 of Genesis chapter 11. I want to extract some information from these verses. Verse 2 says that it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Who is this they being mentioned over and over? We're going to take a look at that in just a few moments. Verse 3, here's they again. And they said one to another, go, let us make brick and burn it thoroughly. And they had brick for stone. And slime had day for mortar. Verse 4. And they again said, Let us go and build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole world. So who is this day being mentioned over and over in these verses here? We're going to take a look at that. All right. We're going to take a look at that. And in order... To gather more information on these three verses here, we're going to turn our attention to the book of Jasher that is mentioned in the Old Testament twice. It is mentioned once in 2 Samuel 1.18. See that? Here it says, the book of Jasher. So 2 Samuel 1.18 is pointing the reader to the book of Jasher. It has some information we need to look at. And it's got a lot of stuff concerning the times of the Tower of Babel. Here's our second witness concerning the book of Jasher. Joshua chapter 10 verse 13 also mentions and recommends that we take a look into this book of Jasher. As the New Testament says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses is something given credence. So this book is legit. So let's go to the book of Jasher. Here it is. Jasher chapter 9. And we're going to skip down to verse 20. It says that Nimrod reigned during that time. All the earth was under his control. And the earth, again, was one tongue in words of union. In other words, one everybody spoke the same language. And check this out. Verse 21. It says that all the princes of Nimrod and his great men took counsel together. Put Mizraim, a.k.a. Egypt, Cush, and Canaan. With their families, they said to each other, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a strong tower. And it's top reaching heaven, and we will make ourselves famed. So it was they 
that were saying, let us make us a name for ourselves. This day being mentioned in Genesis 11, 2, 3, and 4 is none other than the children of Chem. But Mizraim, or Egypt, Cush, and Canaan. As you can see here, they formed some kind of confederacy. It was a group of black men coming together, deciding that they were going to build this Tower of Babel. It says that they were going to build this tower all the way up until they reached heaven in order that the evil of their enemies may cease from them, that they might reign mightily over them, that they may not become scattered over the earth on account of their wars, their enemies' wars, okay? So yeah, the first cult after the flood was a cult of black men. All right, the children of Ham. They're the ones who were at the top back in the day. Verse 22, it says that they all went before the king, King Nimrod, and they told the king these words, and Nimrod agreed with them in this affair, and he did so. So the day being mentioned in Genesis 11, again, it's the children of Ham. They're the ones speaking, saying, let us make us a tower, let us build it with mortar and brick and slime and fire and... They're the ones that found the, la the land of Shinar and decided to lodge there. But if you read the canon, you wouldn't know it was them. Unless you look into the book of Jasher. It says that all these families assembled, consisting of about 600,000 men, and they went to seek an extensive piece of ground to build the city and the tower, and they sought in the whole earth, and they found none like the valley at the east of the land of Shinar, about two days' walk. And they journeyed there, and they dwelt there. See? It was they who ran into the land of Shinar. They're the ones that are being mentioned in Genesis 11, verses 1 through 9. Especially verses 2, 3, and 4. This is a day that ran into this land of Shinar. It wasn't the children of Shem or Japhet. It was the Hamites. All right? So I'm opening up these verses from Genesis 11, okay? It says that they began to make bricks. See? They. They who? The Hamites. They began to make bricks and burn fires to build the city and the tower that they had imagined to complete. There was a little league of nations that they, they had going on, uh, formed of nothing but black men. That was the first cult after the flood. Verse 25 says that they built the tower that was unto them a transgression and a sin, and they began to build it, and while they were building against the creator of heaven, they imagined in their hearts to war against him. Can you believe that? And to ascend into heaven. That's crazy. These people are crazy. They wanted to fight, yeah? Shoot. I mean, they don't call them heathens for nothing. Verse 26, it says that these people and all the families divided themselves into three parts. The first said, we will ascend into heaven and fight against them. The second said, we will ascend to heaven and place our own gods there and serve them. And the third part said, we will ascend to heaven and smite him with bows and spears. Wow. I mean, this is complete lunacy. They're thinking of going up there and shooting bows and arrows and swords and everything they got probably even throwing rocks up into heaven hoping that they get hit yeah you believe that it says but the 
But but the Creator knew all their works and all their evil thoughts, and He saw the city and the tower which they were building. One has to wonder why are they like this? Why are they so ill-willed? It's because in order to find out why the Hamites have these behavioral problems, you need to look into their family lineage. We know Noah was righteous. He was a dad of Ham, right? So you may want to look into who his mom was. Then you'll have the answers. Why are they so corrupt and reprobate? They're not all there. Unbelievable, huh? They wanted to fight the creator. They built a tower trying to shoot rocks. I don't know. With slingshots, spears, bow and arrows, swords. I don't know what the hell they were doing. But it says here that they had evil plans. All right. Verse 27. And when they were building, they built themselves a great city and a very high and strong tower, the Tower of Babel. And on account of its height, the mortar and bricks did not reach the builders and their ascent to it. Until those who went up had completed a full year. And after that, they reached to the builders and gave them the mortar and the bricks. Thus it was done daily. See? So they even enforced harsh labor just to build this tower. So not only were they the first people ruling after the flood, the first tyrants and the first cult, but they were also the first slave masters. So much for uh, white people being the only uh, oppressors, huh? See, but they're not going to tell you that the Hamites were also um, slave owners. That's kind of hypocritical if you ask me, so yeah. They were working people to death. Verse 28. And behold, these ascended and others descended the whole day. And if a brick should fall from their hands and get broken, they would all weep over it. But if a man fell and died, none of them would look at him. Wow. Shh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that verse says it all, what type of people they were. Okay, we got a few more verses. All right, let's finish up. Okay, let's pick it up in verse 29. It says that the Almighty knew their thoughts, and it came to pass when they were building, they cast the arrows towards the heavens, and all the arrows fell upon them with blood. And when they saw that, when they saw them, they saw the arrows with blood, they said to each other, Surely we have slain all those that are in heaven. <laughs> These fools actually shot arrows to heaven. And arrows rained back down on them, filled with blood. And they thought that they killed the, the people or the beings that were in heaven, the souls and the angels and Yada who was in heaven. That's how crazy these Hamites are, man. I'm telling you. And they like to say that they're from Shem. They're not from Shem, man. Hell no. Anyways, verse 30. See that they're trying to fight the Creator and His angels. One can't help but wonder what the hell's wrong with them, man. Verse 30 says, For this was from the Almighty. He's the one who returned the arrows filled with blood on them in order to cause them to err, confuse them, in order to destroy them from off the face of the ground. You see? Thirty-one. And they built a tower in the city, and they did this thing daily until many days and years were elapsed. Verse 32, And the Most High said to the seventy angels who stood foremost before him, to those who were near to him, saying, Come, let us descend and confuse their tongues, that one man shall not understand the language of his neighbor. And they did so unto them. So they said, All right, we're going to move in. We're going to add many other languages to the only one language that they're speaking so they cannot understand each other because 
Otherwise, they're going to continue to cause problems. Verse 33. And from that day following, they forgot each man his neighbor's tongue, and they could not understand to speak in one tongue. And when the builder took from the hands of his neighbor lime or stone, which he did not order, the builder would cast it away and throw it upon his neighbor that he would die. Wow. So they couldn't even understand each other when they were building this tower. So there was a miscommunication and languages because they they couldn't understand each other at this time. They already were speaking different languages. So miscommunication caused deaths. So that was ordained by Yah in order to to calm them down because they were just acting buck wild. Verse 34, And they did so many days, and they killed many of them in this manner. They were still trying to build a tower, even though they couldn't understand each other. So people were dying because of this lack of communication. And they were dying either way, even when they could communicate with each other. That shows you how reprobate these Hamites were, man. You know? Verse 35, the Almighty smote the three divisions that were there, and he punished them according to their works and the signs. Those who said, we will ascend to heaven and serve our gods, became like apes and elephants. And those who said, we will smite the heaven with arrows, the Almighty killed them. The Creator killed them. His messengers, the angels, killed them. One man through the hand of his neighbor in the third division of those who said we will ascend to heaven and fight against him. The highest scattered them throughout the earth. So he recompensed them for all their stupidity that they had going on. Verse 36, we're almost done. And those who were left among them, when they knew and understood the evil which was coming upon them, they forsook the building, and they also became scattered upon the face of the whole earth. So that's the only thing that could stop them, is if you put some of them away, kill them. Otherwise, they would have just kept going, acting stupid. So the highs had to interfere. Verse 37, And they ceased building the city and the tower, therefore he called that place Babel. For the Almighty, or I should say the highest judge, confounded the language of the whole earth. Behold, it was at the east of the land of Shinar. Verse 38. Verse 38 says, And as to the tower which the sons of men built, the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up one third part thereof. And a fire also descended from heaven and burnt another third. And the other third, the last third, is left to this day. And it is of that part, which was aloft. And its circumference is three days walk. Kind of reminds you of the two-thirds of Yasharel, right? Two-thirds will be destroyed, one-third left. Hmm. Last verse, verse 39, and many of the sons of men died in that tower, a people without number. So a lot of people died making that stupid tower of Babel, so many that you can't even count, apparently, as it says here in verse 39. So yeah, those building the tower were none other than Nimrod and his family, the Hamites, as it says here in verse 21. All right, there it is again. It was the children of Ham that decided to build the tower and that were acting all crazy. All right. You can find the info in the book of Jasher. Mentioned in the Old Testament twice. And now you know who was this day. This day that journeyed from the east until they found the land of Shinar. And it was, it was also the same day that said, let us make brick, burn it thoroughly, brick for stone and slime, and mortar. It was the children of Ham 
They said, let us build us a city, a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, to fight with the highest judge. You believe that? Let us make us a name. So they were the rebels, the first cult group after the flood. And, yep, they had people in bondage, but it happened once, it's not going to happen again. Well, now you know what was going on back in the day. And I hope this lesson opens your eyes and mind and begin to understand that the children of Ham come from spurious roots, let's just say it that way. All right? So that's all I got for this video. I hope it was informative. And it's information like this that will lead you down the tunnel to greater truths. So till next time, stay blessed. Much love. Shalom.